All right, folks, here we go with a quick look at the effectiveness of the 12 gauge pump shotgun. In this case, with number four buckshot. And that concludes today's lesson on the effectiveness of the 12 gauge pump shotgun. Hi folks, HR Funk here with one of the most time honored and trusted home defense implements ever devised. What I have, if you can't already tell, is a 12 gauge slide action, AKA pump shotgun. And shotguns very similar to this have been used for over a century to defend hearth and home. They've also found roles in our military and most notably from my own past for years and years they have been trusted companions in police department patrol cars in fact they've been trusted companions for nearly as long as there have been police patrol cars but recently as in the last decade or so the 12 gauge shotgun has taken on a different role in police work and if you're not aware it has been largely supplanted in patrol cars by the tactical carbine or the so-called patrol rifle in police parlance and more and more, the shotgun has been taking on a role with SWAT teams and special units for things like door breaching and riot control. So I thought with that change in paradigm in the police universe, it might be interesting to take another look at the 12 gauge shotgun and see if it is still the best implement for home defense or if maybe nowadays there are other options and maybe there have always been other options that might serve a little bit better. So I'm going to discuss that in this video, and at the end, it'll be up to you to decide if the shotgun is still your best option for home defense, or if maybe you want to explore some of the other things that I'm going to talk about. So I suppose the first thing we need to discuss is why shotguns in general, and the 12 gauge pump shotgun in particular, has become viewed as such an iconic home defense firearm in the first place. And the number one reason has got to be their effectiveness, particularly at home defense distances, the 12 gauge shotgun with the right ammunition is capable of being extremely effective. In fact, there is nothing that will produce a much more devastating wound than a 12 gauge shotgun with double out buckshot at close range. So effectiveness is number one. Number two is their intimidation factor. And I've talked about this in the past when I have pointed shotguns at people and told them to do something they have done whatever I've told them to do very, very quickly. I have not gotten that type of response all the time with handguns and rifles, but absolutely with shotguns, something about looking down the maw of that 12 gauge barrel gets very quick compliance. And in a home defense role, that could be very important because someone invading your home might turn and see that barrel and decide either A, they have somewhere much more important to be at that moment, or B, they are going to do exactly what you tell them to do without hesitation. Either way, you win without ever firing a shot. Also, they are very reliable. Typically, a shotgun like this can sit in storage for years and years and years with very little in the way of any kind of maintenance other than maybe dusting it off every now and then. But if called on to defend home and hearth, it is going to be just as reliable as the day it left the factory. This type of shotgun is also capable of using a wide variety of different types of ammunition. Now, most of the ammunition made for shotguns is for hunting and other sporting purposes. When we talk about defensive roles, generally we're talking about number four buckshot or larger, or in some cases, slugs out of this type of shotgun. And any of those in a home defense role is going to be extremely effective. So with all of those attributes, why would anyone ever consider anything different for a home defense firearm than a 12 gauge pump shotgun? Well, along with all of those attributes, there are also some drawbacks associated with the shotgun. Beginning with, particularly in conventional format, such as my Remington 870 here, they tend to be larger and heavier than other types of defensive firearms. And if you are a reasonably healthy adult male, 200 pounds or so, you might not have a great deal of difficulty when it comes to handling the shotgun. But people who don't fall into that category might find them to be a little bit unwieldy, especially when it comes to working in tight confines like you would have in your home, working around walls and pieces of furniture and things like that. 
Shotguns also tend to have a lower ammunition capacity than other types of firearms, specifically pistol caliber carbines or tactical carbines of the same general size. They also tend to be a little bit more involved when it comes to functioning than other types of firearms. If someone who is not particularly experienced is shooting a 12 gauge pump shotgun and they short stroke the slide, it's not going to function properly. So it does take a little bit more experience and knowledge to operate one of these shotguns properly than it does with some other types of firearms, particularly those of the semi-automatic variety. The last drawback associated with the 12 gauge pump shotgun is the one nobody ever wants to talk about, but it is one of the things that is the most detrimental when it comes to actually training and working with the 12 gauge shotgun, and that is the recoil that it generates when using proper defensive ammunition. And as a law enforcement firearms instructor, and all of you other law enforcement firearms instructors out there, please feel free to chime in on this because I think you're going to agree. If we had rifle qualification or handgun qualification, usually there were not a lot of issues with that. But it seems like when shotgun qualification came around, that's when you would hear the most complaining and there would be the most people that remember they had something else to do that day and they couldn't make it to qualification or couldn't make it to training or what have you. And whether they admit it or not, it's because they did not like dealing with the recoil of the 12 gauge shotgun with either double lot buckshot or slug ammunition. And this is not just smaller frame officers or anything else. This is some guys that I would think would not really mind it all that much, but there are a lot of people that just do not like dealing with the recoil that this shotgun generates. And again, to try to get those people to train regularly and become proficient or in the role of home defense for homeowners to train routinely and become proficient with the shotgun takes training. And if they're not willing to do that because of the recoil that, that the shotgun generates, then that definitely is a drawback that's associated with this weapons platform. So now let's take a look at some other firearms that might be considered as an alternative to the 12 gauge pump shotgun. And the first one that I'll choose is going to be the one that has been replacing the 12 gauge pump shotgun in police cars, and that is the tactical carbine. And the tactical carbine, specifically in this case, the AR-15, has some things that it brings to the table that are definitely a little bit better than what you get typically with the 12 gauge pump shotgun. Beginning with the size and weight of the AR-15, which is generally going to be smaller and lighter than you're going to get with virtually any type of a pump 12 gauge shotgun. So for other family members who might not be six foot males, 200 pounds or what have you, or if you are a male, uh, adult male, and you've got some physical limitations, it might be easier to handle an AR-15 rifle than it is to handle the full-size pump 12-gauge shotgun. Most AR-15s and a lot of other tactical carbines have adjustable buttstocks. Now, I know some shotguns will have an adjustable buttstock, too. They typically don't have the range of adjustment that you get with an AR-15 stock, and many of the conventional shotguns, like the one that I've been holding here, don't have any way to adjust length of pull at all unless you completely replace the stock, which most people don't do. Also, with the tactical carbines, you're going to get a much greater ammunition capacity. With the 20 round magazine that I have here, you're getting four times the ammunition capacity that you would have with the 12 gauge pump shotgun if it was loaded to full capacity with a round in the chamber, because it's got a four round magazine, so one in the chamber would make it five rounds. Now, at home defense distances, I don't know that you're picking up any effectiveness with the AR-15. In fact, the 12 gauge shotgun might be a more effective weapons platform or weapon at that distance or at those distances than the AR-15 chambered for the 556 NATO cartridge. Even so, it's going to generate much less recoil, which whether people admit it or not, is another reason that this type of a weapon is replacing the 12 gauge shotgun in police cars because it doesn't have that recoil impulse. It's lighter, it's easier to train people with, it is quicker to get them proficient with than it is with the 12 gauge shotgun. It's cheaper because the ammunition doesn't cost as much. So there are a lot of benefits to the AR-15 uh, and a lot of attributes over and above what you would typically get with a conventional 12 gauge pump shotgun. But there are also some drawbacks to the AR-15 AR in a home defense role. And that might be a topic for a future video. I don't know that 
The AR is the best home defense firearm. It is an option uh, as opposed to the 12 gauge pump shotgun. But again, I don't know that this is absolutely the best, but it is certainly one that you might want to consider. The next firearm I'll discuss as an alternative to the pump 12 gauge shotgun is the pistol caliber carbine. And I'm going to start out with one of my absolute favorites. You've seen this in videos before. This is my Marlin 1894 carbine, 1894 CP that is, chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge. This has a 16 inch barrel. It is extremely compact. It is significantly lighter than the 12 gauge shotgun. Even so, the magazine capacity of this carbine is about twice the capacity, in fact, it's exactly twice the capacity of the magazine on the 12 gauge shotgun. And it's chambering, as I said, the 357 Magnum cartridge, which at home defense distances, I think is an extremely effective cartridge. This is going to be a firearm that just about anybody is going to be able to handle, maybe very, very young children, not so much, uh, or people that are elderly and, and, and frail, maybe not so much, but most people are going to be able to handle this just fine. It works well in close confines and tight quarters. And as I said, it is just a great option for home defense. The biggest thing I think you lose with the 1894 CP is that psychological factor that I was talking about. People are going to look at this and think it's a toy. <laughs> so it might not gain the compliance as quickly as you would get with the shotgun. But even so, if you do actually have to fire it, I hope you don't, but if you do, you're still going to have a very effective cartridge that you're going to be using in that home defense role. There are also a lot of more contemporary pistol caliber carbines like my kel Sub-2000 here. And in this case, this is even lighter than the 1894 CP that I had a minute ago. This is going to be something that is going to be very easy for most people to be able to manage. The recoil, while more than you might expect since this is chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge, the straight blowback system in this uh, particular Sub-2000 tends to generate a little bit more or transfer a little bit more of that felt recoil to your shoulder. Even so, it is not difficult to control. It is light. It is also easy to maneuver in close confines. The magazine, in this case, holds, I think, five or six times <laughs> the amount of ammunition that I have in the 12-gauge pump shotgun, so ammunition should not be a concern with this. Even so, both this and the 1894 CP still have all the advantages of a shoulder fire platform, so you have that greater stability and the ability to place your shots more effectively. As I said, this one is chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge, so you're still going to get very good effectiveness at those home defense distances. And this would just be not necessarily the specific pistol caliber carbine, but the pistol caliber carbines in general are a very viable option these days. There's a lot of ammunition out there intended for defensive applications. And if you're considering an alternative to your 12-gauge pump shotgun, the pistol caliber carbines are definitely something you should think about. The last, and in some respect, the least alternative I'll talk about in a home defense role to the 12 gauge pump shotgun are handguns. And handguns, if you'll pardon the expression, exist for one reason, and that's because they're handy. A lot of people like the fact that handguns are so portable and that they can put them someplace in a relatively compact space, like a nightstand drawer or what have you. Now, one good thing about home defense handguns, as opposed to handguns that you're going to be using for CCW or what have you, is that you can at least use a full-size handgun. You don't have the confines of something that needs to be underneath a concealment garment or what have you. So firearms like my Smith & Wesson Model 28 here, which has the full six inch barrel and all that, are viable options in a home defense role. In fact, it gives you a little bit more of an advantage over using a shorter barreled or smaller option because it is going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. It's going to manage recoil a little bit easier. And it's going to have a full six shot capacity as opposed to maybe a five shot J frame or something like that. And interestingly, even the six shot revolver still has a capacity advantage over my 12 gauge pump shotgun, which at full capacity with a round in the chamber only has five rounds. Even so, you are giving up a lot with a handgun in a home defense role. You are giving up a lot of effectiveness to both the shotgun and the longer barreled pistol caliber carbines. You are also giving up a lot of controllability because now you are into a situation where you're using a handgun. You don't have the advantages of the shoulder fired platform 
for shooting and placing more accurate shots. And generally speaking, a handgun is going to be your least option. Even so, I believe handguns are the most popular option in a home defense setting. So there are a lot of them out there, a lot of them in use, so, and I wanted to make sure that I covered them. Revolvers are certainly a viable option if you're going to use a handgun, but also if you prefer the semi-auto, you're going to pick up something in the way of ammunition capacity. Here I have my CZ P01, and this is the one that I keep close by in a home defense role. And I really like this little pistol. It's very reliable. It's accurate enough. It does its job very, very well. Even so, if I really think I'm going to need to defend myself when I'm in my home, I'm either going to reach for a shotgun or a carbine, and this is going to be my emergency last resort. And I suppose before I completely close out the video, I should talk about other shotgun options that are an alternative to the 12-gauge pump shotgun. Certainly nowadays there are semi-automatic shotguns, there are also bullpup type shotguns, there are the coach guns, there are the single shots and all that. With the semi-autos and the bullpups and such, generally you're going to start to work with more complex types of firearms, some of which are going to require a little bit more in the way of maintenance every now and again than the pump shotgun does. Also, as you add extended magazines and what have you, the ammunition doesn't get any lighter, so you're still going to be dealing with quite a bit of weight and additional weight over and above the traditional 12-gauge pump shotgun. And you also still are going to have that recoil. And the recoil, again, is one of those things that because of the ammunition that's necessary for defensive applications, you're always going to be dealing with a certain level. And even if you get into lighter and lighter shotguns, like the coach guns or something like that, if you're using double lot buck or you're using number four shot or what have you, you're probably going to start to feel even more recoil from those because of those lighter and lighter shotguns that are going to transfer more of the recoil to your shoulder. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, WarburBunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. If you go to WarburBunker.com, you can find my t-shirts there, along with all of Nathan's other firearms and patriotic-themed gear that he has at WarburBunker.com. And if you use my discount code there, which is hrfunk for you, that'll save you 10% off your entire order from warbirdbunker.com. See you next time, folks. Until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.